In our next learning objective, we're going to take a look at the effect of inventory errors on the financial statements. Now, an error in inventory will affect not only the inventory, but also cost of goods sold, gross profit, and net income. The key point to remember is that inventory errors will reverse out in the next accounting period. Or, in other words, the inventory error is fully corrected in the next accounting period. So within the two period time frame, the inventory error will reverse. And that's because the ending inventory of one period where the error exists is going to be the beginning inventory of the next period. So for example, Smart Touch assumed here has $5,000 more in its ending inventory. Let's see the accounts that are affected. If you overstate ending inventory, then you understate cost of goods sold, overstate gross profit and net income. This is very clear if you go back to the accounting equation And if you overstate an asset, which is inventory in this case, you have to overstate equity, which is due to higher net income. Now, the higher net income is a result of the fact that the lower cost of goods sold, as we see here, understated, gives you a higher gross profit and a higher net income, assuming operating expenses are correct. So we can say that errors in ending inventory are directly related to net income. Now, a common fraud in business is to overstate inventory, and that would lead to higher income. So we also can find cases where Inventory is also understated. You try to smooth income or maybe try to create hidden reserves, as I'll explain in a moment. Now, again, when you think about the effect of overstating ending inventory, well, it's clear that it is covering up an error someplace else. So, for example, what you could do, and it has been done, in a fraudulent situation not only does overstating inventory overstate net income that gets close to retained earnings but it could be covering cash theft so if your company is experiencing a fraud like this what what has been done in the past is that cash is taken from the company, but inventory is written up, and that will cover the cash loss. Now, as I said, it's possible that you could also have understated inventory. You may not do it purposely, or you could if, you know, if it's fraudulent, of course, and all of this is unethical, but you could have a lower inventory in an attempt to try to smooth income. The lower inventory will obviously have the opposite effects as the higher inventory, it will understate income. And let's assume that Smart Touch understated inventory by 1,200. That could have been they omitted an inventory from a certain part of a warehouse. They didn't count that inventory or they could have understated it by being overly conservative with a lower of cost or market test. So let's see what happens. Just the opposite. If ending inventory is understated, that's your error. You overstate COGS, understates profit, and it understates your net income. And once again, going back to the accounting equation, if you understate ending inventory, you'll understate profit by overstating COGS. So net income is lower. And once again, there's a direct relationship between inventory errors in ending inventory and net income. Now, of course, just the opposite with beginning inventory. You can't forget that the next period, you're going to wind up with a reversal. So, for example, 
If you overstated ending inventory, we know we're going to understate COGS and overstate net income, but don't forget the ending inventory of one year becomes the beginning inventory of the next, and notice what happens. COGS is understated. I'm sorry, it's here. If the inventory is overstated, COGS is understated, but in the next period, the ending inventory of the current period becomes the beginning inventory of the next period, and that will overstate COGS. So in one period, you overstated income. In the next period, you understated it. Notice also that, and if we go back, notice also that when you have an understatement of ending inventory, again, it's directly related, or an overstatement is directly related to income. Understating inventory understates income. So here, it's going to be, I guess, just the opposite for beginning inventory. It's going to have an inverse relationship. So if we think about this, understating beginning overstates that income. Overstating beginning understates that income. So we can look at a general rule, and we could say beginning inventory errors are inversely related to net income. And ending inventory errors are directly related to net income. And that would be a very good way to understand these effects. Now, of course, we mentioned that the Inventory, we're going back to ending inventory, highlights the effects on the accounting equation. And I know I already did something with this with you just a few minutes ago, but you have to remember that the effect of inventory on net income, COGS, and then of course gross profit, and then net income is going to be closed to equity by closing it to retained earnings. So those effects will find their way into stockholders' equity through the retained earnings. Now, to summarize, we can now look at the effects on two accounting periods. So let's take the correct results first. The correct results tell us that we have a beginning inventory of 100, purchased 300, available for sale is 4, ending inventory is 250, and cost of goods sold is 150. The ending inventory of one year becomes the beginning inventory of the next, so that beginning inventory is 250, purchases is 3, available is 550. If ending inventory is 450, cost of goods sold is 100. Now, let's assume that an error is made. If an error is made, then let's now say that ending inventory is overstated by 30. That's going to be the error. Ending inventory should have been 250. It is now at 280. So we overstate ending inventory in year one by 30. $30. And that is year one. If that happens, same beginning inventory. It was correct in year one. Same purchases. Same goods available. Ending inventory is 280 Therefore, by subtracting ending inventory from goods available, cost of goods sold is 120 And it is not... Correct. It should have been 150 
it overstates profit by 30. Now, here is the effect of inventory errors reversing or correcting themselves after two periods are completed. Now, again, that does not justify saying that, well, if I find an error in year one and don't have to correct it, it misstates the economic activity for each individual year. So you're still wrong. So the ending inventory of year one becomes the beginning inventory of year two. Now in year two, we overstate beginning inventory by 30. So remember, beginning inventory should have been 250. Now it's stated at 280. So with purchases being the same at 300 each year, that was just an assumption. Obviously, it could be different. Beginning inventory, 280, plus purchases of three give you a goods available for sale at 580 minus the ending inventory of 450, which, by the way, is correct. So there's no error in ending inventory here. Cost of goods sold is 130, and it should have been 100. So now this understates profit by 30. And we can see that it offsets. So income was higher by 30 in the first year, and inventory is lower by 30 in the next year, and it offsets. And the table, I want to go back. These are the effects on inventory. So go back to this for the inventory error. It offsets and they will reverse out within one year because the beginning inventory errors are opposite of the errors in ending inventory and they occur in, a, in the, the very next accounting period. So looking at this from the standpoint of the company, remember that the inventory errors reverse out after one accounting period. Doesn't mean that we should let these errors go. The key point now just to summarize, is that if we look at the accounting equation, we're going to have ending inventory. If it's overstated, we overstate profit. But the very next year, the ending inventory of that year becomes the beginning inventory. And if that inventory is overstated, we're going to understate profit. So within the two-year period, that will offset. If ending inventory is understated, profit will be understated, but the very next year, ending inventory becomes the beginning inventory, and the effect will be to overstate profit. And again, the net effect is going to be zero. So inventory errors will reverse out in one accounting period. So in year one, year two, that's when the effects will completely reverse out. And again, does not mean that we should allow inventory errors, but they will reverse out after two full periods of reporting.